again, I'll echo what Representative Horn said. First, we have to start off with thank you. Thank you for everything you do for our students and our teachers every day. And thank you for being willing to take on this next step in the evolution of our education system. A little bit about me and why I am so focused on this. Uh, my grandfather grew up dirt poor. My grandfather grew up on the wrong side of town, didn't have the opportunity to graduate from high school. Uh, my grandfather pulled himself up by his bootstraps, served in the armed forces, and then sold life insurance door to door across the entire Southeast. And because he did that, he was able to provide educational opportunities for his children and their children that otherwise we wouldn't have had. So I never took that for granted. I was taught from a very early age the importance that the work you do in your, your years in school really have on determining what kind of work you do for the next 40, 50 years after that. But I was also taught that even in this day and age, not everyone in our nation has that chance, that same opportunity I had. And quite frankly, education in the United States is supposed to be the great equalizer of opportunity. It doesn't mean it's gonna be as easy for every student. It doesn't mean they're all gonna come from the same background, start on the same level, but it's supposed to be there so that every student, no matter their background, no matter uh, what neighborhood they live in, can go to one of our schools, work hard, and succeed. And so I, I firmly believe that. I firmly believe that in my lifetime we will reach a place where we provide that for all students. And I wanted to be a part of that. So I taught at West Charlotte High School down the interstate uh, over in West Charlotte, North Carolina. And like a lot of the places where you all are leading and teaching, uh, West Charlotte is a place where it can be tough to be a teacher. It can be tough to be a principal but it's even harder to be a student. If students who are coming from backgrounds uh, where when they come into kindergarten, they might not know how to hold a pencil, and they don't know their age, their alphabet yet. Students, by the time they get to the ninth grade, if, if they don't eat breakfast in school, they're not eating breakfast that day. And I, and I, I personally dealt with my own students that uh, were some of my hardest to engage, my 16-year-old my ninth graders, uh, when I finally engaged them just, just to find out that they were reading on fourth or fifth grade level. And I took a step back from that and said, if I ever have the opportunity to do something to change the system, I'm going to take that opportunity. And that, that led me to run for the Forsyth County School Board. It led me to run for this office. Because I truly believe that we have an education system that we need to innovate the system to change it for better outcomes for teachers and students. Now, what does that mean? We have a system that was designed over 100 years ago. It was designed uh, for, for this area, for agriculture and industry. And we still have the same bones, the same structure of that system. When you think about it, you, you have 20 to 30 students that come into a classroom, sit in standard rows, get taught at a standard pace, uh, then have to take a standardized test. The state standards are told to the teacher from Raleigh what they need to be a teacher. So you might have some really, really exceptional high flyers in your classroom that I had that you just cannot give enough work to do. You know, they could be two grade levels ahead, but you're on this standard pace because you've got to worry about the middle of the pack and making sure they're still going too. So that they lose out on an opportunity to work ahead. But even more importantly, you know there are those students that after you finish that section of the standards, you give that test, they might get a D or a C. They didn't fully understand it, but you've got to move on. You've got to keep going. And that, the most important thing I, I say about the system is it's not a reflection on principals. It's not a reflection on teachers. It's not a reflection on leaders. You, I've been in the classrooms, especially here, uh, where we're, we're breaking down those barriers. Uh, visited one classroom last year, didn't even have desks. Because you here are leading, breaking that down. And teachers are doing in their classroom, principals are doing in their schools. They know it's what needs to be done. What we need to do from Raleigh is be able to empower that by breaking down that old industrial age system and let you all move into the digital age. You all are doing that here in, in Rowan Salisbury. The idea that, that you can use this 
this same technology that has completely disrupted our society, uh, and in some ways in, in, in a negative, let's make sure we use it as a positive. Let's use these devices so that we can personalize, individualize education for students. Uh, there have been some great dropout prevention programs using technology that will show a student that feels like it's absolutely hopeless for them to reach that diploma and will say, if you just work this much every day, here is your map. Here is your personalized map to your diploma. And they are having great success getting students to graduate because when you can make it real, when they can take uh, that content, that device, and work at their pace and, and see that there is a path forward, uh, they, they get engaged and they get encouraged. On the flip side, working with cooperative innovative high schools, if you have a student that can be working two grade levels ahead, the content on, on, on these devices uh, can let them do that, and then they get to the cooperative innovative high school and can graduate with an associate's degree at the same time as a high school diploma. This is where education is going. This has been one of uh, my top priorities in the State Department. Uh, just had a very exciting announcement yesterday that we were able to use money that we found was not utilized two years ago. We worked with our partners in the General Assembly to carry that forward, and we just bought uh, new iPads to get out to K-3 uh, reading teachers so that you can take the iPads you already have and get those to other teachers or get those to students. We're getting more of these good tools in the classroom. And so it's now, how do we use that? Well, as Representative Horn said, we can't figure that out in Raleigh. We can't come up with, hey, we've changed the industrial age system. Here's the new system, because Raleigh says so. And whether you're in Murphy or Manio, here's what you're now going to use. Uh, we realized this has to come from the ground up. And so that's why we're so excited about what you are about to embark, embark on, what you here are leading. Don't let it be, uh, any, don't let anyone understate what you are doing here. And if, if you haven't uh, gotten yet, this is a big deal. This day should make it seem like this is a big <laughs> deal. You have the opportunity ahead of you to help us transform the education system. You do. Each and every one of you here, leading in your schools. This is real. And I really want that to set in. This is a huge step for the state of North Carolina happening right here in the transition from industrial age practices into digital age practices. And yes, it's gonna, it's gonna be bumpy, but you've got support from Raleigh with defending your back if it gets bumpy because we know this is the right way to go. We know this is the right direction. We just need someone to show it to the rest of the state give us the model that we can scale across the entire state. So that's why we're excited about this. Why, did, why is, is this the district doing it? Uh, because of the leadership. Because of Dr. Moody, because of you, because of your board, because of your county commissioners. You, you are the leadership that has already shown interest in this. You've already shown that within the confines of the non-flexibility, you are gonna move forward and you were going to start down this path anyway, now we're freeing you up so that you can go full speed ahead. And we are very excited to see what you all bring to us. Uh, and, and again, uh, you will be seeing a lot of us probably because we really want to know what it is uh, that you all uh, think is going to be the future for education. Uh, so again, thank you for everything you do. We are extremely excited about the work you're about to embark on. Uh, and, and thank you for being willing to take this on. It is an extremely exciting time in education, and I am, I am just so happy that you all have, have stepped up to this and are willing to be partners uh, in this next big step for education in our country. Thank you.